Math students, how you doing? Let's, uh, let's solve some equations, shall we? Let's do that. Uh, so we've learned all this, uh, all this trigonometry. Let's, um, what we've done with the trigonometry that we've learned is we've found how to find the sine, find the cosine, find the tangent, find the secant, find the cosecant, find the cotangent. But have we learned how to solve equations, that is, solve for the angle? Well, let's explore that today, shall we? Uh, let's start with, uh, I'm just going to zip through some problems one by one, all right? So we're going to start with sine of theta equals negative one-half, and theta is between uh, zero and two pi, okay? So let me explain. Theta is an angle. The sine of angle is the sine of theta is one half. The particular angle that theta is includes zero, does not include two pi, but includes everything between zero and two pi. And remember, that means it's the entire unit circle. It's just that this thing over here we're defining as zero rather than two pi. Okay? So the sine of theta is negative one half. Remember, on the unit, y'all, the unit circle don't let it leave you. The unit circle will, will always, always be a thing. It's going to be an important thing. So uh, don't, don't think that, oh yeah, we studied that. I don't need it anymore. No, yeah, you do. You still need it. So the sine is negative one half. That means that uh, the sine on the unit circle is the y coordinate. So it's going to be down here. So it's going to be here and here. Okay. Now, if the sine were positive one half, I know what angle that would be. That would be 30 degrees or pi over six. If it's negative one half, this must be negative pi over six. And if it's over here, it's going to be pi plus pi over six. That's seven pi over six. Okay. So I got my two answers. And the only problem now is that this answer is good, but this answer has a problem. And that is theta needs to be between 0 and 2 pi. That doesn't include negative numbers. So this negative pi over 6, I need to rename this. I need to find a coterminal angle. So I'm going to say, well, what is 2 pi minus pi over 6? This is 11 pi over 6. And now I've got my two answers. Theta equals 7 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. Okay? You're not always going to have two answers, but frequently you get two answers with these problems. Let's do another one. Let's say this time the tangent of theta, the tangent of theta is going to be uh, negative root 3. Okay, the tangent of theta. Get my... Uh, <laughs> unit circles are not looking much like circles lately. Uh, okay, so on the unit circle, the, the y-coordinate is the sine, the x-coordinate is the cosine, and the tangent is y over x. But let me tell you another way to think about the tangent, and that is, well, the angle is a line that is going through the origin, right? The slope of that line is for any point on the line, y over x. So the slope of the angle is also the tangent of the angle. And so if you're used to thinking about slopes, then you think, oh, okay, yeah, when it's like this, it's, uh, it's going to be zero. Yes, that's true. The tangent of an angle going this way or this way is zero. When it's like this, it's undefined, or like this, it's undefined. That's also true. Uh, when it uh, is going up like this, that's a slope of one. Yes, it's also a tangent of one. But this is a tangent of negative root 3. Okay, so let's see. Root 3 is about like 1.7, so that's more than 1. But this is down on the negative. It's going down here like this. And it's one of the special angles for my unit circle. This is negative 60 degrees or negative pi over 3. Okay? But again... I want my theta, I didn't tell you this, but I'm telling you now, I want my theta to be between 0 and 2 pi. So rather than call this 
uh, negative pi over 3, let's call it 2 pi minus pi over 3, so that's going to be 5 pi over 3, okay? Negative pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, they're coterminal angles, they're pointing in the same direction. I can, I can name that angle either one of those, or, or a host of other names, uh, but this time I'm going to call it uh, 5 pi over 3. Now, where else is the tangent going to be negative square root of 3? Well, it's the tangent, right? So let's, let's remember what we know about the tangent. The tangent function has a period that is different from the sine and the cosine. Sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi. Tangent has a period of pi, which means if I just add or subtract pi to this angle here, in other words, add or subtract half a circle, I get the exact same uh, uh, tangent. So 5 pi over 3 minus pi gets me 2 pi over 3. And those are our two answers. Theta is going to be 2 pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. All right. Problem number 3. Like I said, we're just doing rapid fire problems today. Problem number 3 states... 2 times the cosine of theta equals the square root of 3. And theta is, again, between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Let's just divide both sides by 2. And uh, you get the cosine of theta is the square root of 3 over 2. So let's see. Cosine, that's uh, my x-coordinate. And the square root of 3 over 2, that's over like this. So these two are going to have the same x-coordinate. That's going to be pi over 6 and negative pi over 6. And like I said before, I'm not going to call this negative pi over 6 because I have to find an angle that's between 0 and 2 pi. So let me add 2 pi to that. And I will get, uh, uh, I guess, 11 pi over 6. So that's what my two answers are going to be. Pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. Okay, we're just rocking and rolling here. We're just tearing through these. This is fun. Next problem. Next problem says 3 sine of theta plus 4 equals 1 and theta is on the interval negative infinity to infinity. Okay, couple of things different here. First off, whoa, that's a big interval from negative infinity to infinity. In other words, the entire number line. So, hmm, all right. Uh, so let me subtract 4 from either side. I get 3 times the sine of theta equals negative 3. So that means the sine of theta equals negative 1. And on my unit circle, when the sine is negative 1, that's down here at the south pole. Uh, so what is that? It's negative pi over 2. Uh, and actually, I'm not restricted by the uh, interval this time, so I can just call this negative pi over 2. Let me also think about what the graph of this looks like. So let me graph the sine of x, or the sine of theta. Okay? So when does it equal negative 1? Well, here, and here, and over here, and over here. So, I mean, this graph goes on forever, which means I'm going to get every single minimum that I have on this graph is going to be a solution to this because at all, in all those points, the sine of x equals negative 1. So what that tells me is I'm going to have an infinite number of, uh, of solutions. But it's not like to say that I have an infinite number of solutions is not the same thing as saying, oh, any number will do. No. It's very particular numbers that will do. In particular, this would be Let's see, if this is 0 and this is 2 pi, this must be, uh, no, hold it, this is, no, this is 2 pi, so this must be pi, so this is 3 pi over 2, 
and over here this is going to be negative pi over 2. So either one of those will work. Um, and what I find is all of my solutions are spaced the same distance apart, and that distance is the period of my sine function, and the period of the sine function is 2 pi. So how would I describe this solution? I would say theta equals, and I'm just going to choose one of them. I'll choose this one, negative pi over 2, but I could just as easily choose 3 pi over 2. Negative pi over 2, and now I'm going to say negative pi over 2 or any multiple of 2 pi going forward or backward. Okay? And the way I do that is I say plus 2 n pi, where n is in the integers. Okay? Uh, this thing right there, that z with a little double line on it, that means the set of integers. You can also just write n is an integer, and that'll be just fine. But that little z thing, that, that, uh, it's, it's sort of like the, the real number sign with the r with the double line on it. Uh, this z, it must have been named by a German because z stands for Zahlen, which means to count in German. Uh, but it's the symbol that we use for the integers. So that is what our answer is. It doesn't have to be written like this. Like I said, you could also write 3 pi over 2 there. I guess you could also write 7 pi over 2, but that would start to become sort of uh, a, little, uh, um, a little difficult to follow, a little cryptic uh, without any reason. Okay, uh, look back at the unit circle just for a second, because we got this from the graph, but you can also get it straight from the unit circle. Negative pi over 2 is my, is my solution, right? Because that's where the sine equals negative 1. Or negative pi over 2 is when we go that way. Or we can go this way and get 3 pi over 2, which is also a solution. Or we can go all the way around and then there, which would be 7 pi over 2. And then you start to see, well, I can just circle around the, the, the unit circle as many times as I want to, or circle around the other way, the negative direction, as many times as I want to. But either way, I have to end up here. So it's always going to be negative pi over 2 plus some complete trips around the circle, which is 2 pi in either direction. So again, you end up with negative pi over 2 plus 2n, some integer, times pi. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So our next problem says... What does it say? It says uh, we're going to take the square root of 2 times the secant of theta, and that equals 2. Okay. Well, how about let's just uh, divide both sides by the square root of 2, and that'll get us secant of theta equals 2 divided by the square root of 2. 2 divided by the square root of 2 is, of course, 2, is, is of course the square root of 2. But I'm actually not even going to do that yet because I have the secant of theta, and whenever I find myself uh, solving for theta where I see the secant or the cosecant or the cotangent, I'm just going to immediately look at the reciprocal because I'm much more used to those functions. So reciprocal of secant is cosine of theta. So the cosine is going to be, I'm just going to flip that fraction, square root of 2 over 2. So when does the cosine of theta equal square root of 2 over 2? I know that. It's going to be 45 degrees or pi over 4. That is definitely one of our answers. And uh, remember back when we learned about uh, um, reference angles? Uh, because reference angles actually come into play here. Uh, so I have... The cosine uh, is root 2 over 2, so I know one of my solutions is going to be in quadrant 1, and the other solution is going to be right down over here in quadrant 4. So basically what I'm looking for is the angle in quadrant 4 whose reference angle is pi over 4. And that angle is, again, you can call it either negative pi over 4, or you can call it... Uh, um, 
7 pi over 4. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to specify theta is going to be between negative infinity and infinity, okay? So what that means is I don't have to specify exactly which interval uh, my first solution is going to be in, but I do have to do the plus 2n pi thing. So I'm going to say, okay, I get two solutions here, this one and this one. So theta is going to be uh, pi over 4 plus 2n pi or negative pi over 4 plus 2n pi where n is an integer, okay? Again, instead of negative pi over 4, if I wanted to say 7 pi over 4, that's also perfectly acceptable because it is coterminal with negative pi over 4. On to the next one. Kind of fun, aren't they? It's okay. It's okay for this to be fun. You don't have to be embarrassed. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do root 3 times a cotangent of theta equals 3. A few things in this problem that are very similar to the last problem, and that is I'm going to say, okay, well, let's divide by square root of 3 to start off with. And so uh, we get 3 over root 3, which normally I would say, okay, that equals square root of 3. But before I do that, I'm going to say it's the cotangent. Um, let me put things in terms of sines or cosines or tangents. That's what I'm used to. So the reciprocal of the cotangent is the tangent. So the tangent is going to be root 3 over 3. So I'm looking for any theta whose tangent is root 3 over 3. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, root 3 over 3, that's going to be a number that is less than 1. That's going to be down here. That's going to be pi over 6, if my memory serves me right. Uh, and again, like I said earlier, uh, if, you're, if you don't remember, what angle has a, uh, a tangent of root 3 over 3? You need to be looking at your unit circle a little more carefully. Okay? So, um, so my tangent is root 3 over 3. And uh, what's the other solution going to be? Well, when it's tangent, the other solution is going to be over here on the other side of the circle. Okay? I'm just going to add pi to pi over 6. But... I'm not going to specifically uh, um, name these two different solutions because think about it. The period of the tangent function is pi, which means one of my solutions is going to be pi over 6. Another my solution is going to be pi over 6 plus pi. Another solution is going to be pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Another solution is going to be pi over 6 plus 3 pi. So really, I can say theta equals pi over 6 plus some multiple of pi, not 2n times pi, but n times pi, because the period of the tangent function is pi. And n, of course, is an integer. <clears throat> okay? If you write your solution as pi over 6 plus n pi, or 7 pi over 6, sorry, pi over 6 plus 2n pi, or 7 pi over 6 plus 2n pi, it's not that you're wrong, you're just writing more than you need to. You're not being efficient. And let me tell you, mathematicians, man, mathematicians love efficiency. So this is a much better way to write it. Okay. Uh, last problem. Our last problem of the video says one half times the secant of theta plus 6 equals 7. Well, I know what to do with this. First thing I need to do is just subtract 6 from both sides, and I get 1 half times the secant of theta equals 7. Let me multiply both sides by 2, and I get... Sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got a little too fast for myself there. I'm subtracting 6 from both sides. That needs to equal 1. There you go. So now multiply both sides by 2, and you get secant of theta equals 2. Okay, again... If you end up with cosecant or secant or cotangent, uh, take the reciprocal. 
the other three functions are easier to deal with. So the reciprocal of secant is cosine. So the cosine is going to be one half. When does the cosine equal one half? Cosine is the x coordinate, so that's going to be over here. It's going to be here and here. This is pi over three. This is negative pi over three. And I should have said before that theta is anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. So that tells me that my two solutions are going to be theta equals pi over 3 plus uh, 2n pi, not n pi. n pi would take you over here, and that's not one of our solutions. Our solutions are just here and here. So 2n pi or negative pi over 3, and if I wanted to, I could call that 5 pi over 3. It's coterminal, uh, plus 2n pi where n is an integer. Okay. All right. So, feeling good? I hope so. So now, now that you know how to do these, you can solve any trigonometric equation you want. No, 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 no. This is just an introduction, okay? There's a lot more difficult uh, equations that we're going to be dealing with, but that's for the next video. I'll see you then.